I'm Travis Rice, live here in beautiful Jackson Hole, where we're hosting this event. I am 39 years old, but I identify as a 28 year old. And, you know, favorite place to ride, man, it's, it's so variable, I literally cannot give you a location because, you know, the beauty of snowboarding is it's, con it's so condition dependent and it's these fleeting moments where all of the variables come together at certain areas. Those are the best places to ride when it all comes together. I'm gonna to say natural selection is probably my favorite discipline in snowboarding because it involves learnings from just about all disciplines. The board that I ride, especially for this event, is the Golden Orca. Um, this board I spent many years designing with my friends at Lib Technologies, built out in Squim, Washington, made near Canada. And what makes this board so appealing for this type of riding is what we've done to it. So we kind of took a concept that was a bit impossible. Uh, I have a board called the Orca that is a directional kind of all mountain, like it's, a, it's like a fish, but with a power tail, hence the name Orca. And we took the impossible task of how do you turn the best directional board out there into a twin. Um, these bindings are called the Falcors, uh, named after a sailboat. I was lucky enough to sail several oceans on. And this binding is definitely tuned as kind of a free ride binding. Um, it's not too stiff. They're extremely lightweight. Um, got great flex for you know doing tricks and being able to like really utilize what I think a good stiffer board into medium stiff binding into less stiff boot into your foot like that's that's the transition that I feel I'm always hunting. Um, a couple of cool things with this binding is both of these bindings are canted. So you've got about a three degree cant in each binding, which means it's angled, which is better geometry with the mechanics of your lower body. Um, it's got good cushion, and I think the most predominant feature of this is it's actually utilizing a material called forged carbon. And these little, uh, call them flux capacitors, uh, we spent a lot of time trying to design these so that it was as minimal as it could be, yet you had the support that you needed. Um, another thing I think that's worth noting is we've gone to great lengths to absolutely reduce as much drag as possible on the heel cup with rounding the aluminum heel cup and minimizing the high back forward lean adjuster. Because, I mean, that's one of the components that I see on bindings that I don't really like is when you have a lot of bulk back here. I mean, whenever you're on a heel edge on any type of soft snow, like this is penetrating and causing drag as you traverse, ride, do turns, stomp. And so the more you can minimize this, um, the better you're going to be juiced. For outerwear, or as I call it, body armor, um, armor for the elements. I mean, this is such a crucial component because if you go in dawn to dusk, or oftentimes longer, um, you need materials and you need outerwear that can breathe with you throughout the day, can handle everything from you know, warm springy days to you know, the coldest of Arctic winds and so, um, I've been with Quicksilver for a little over 15 years, and this particular kit is, I would say, their premier kind of high-end three-layer gore. It's the Highline Pro Kit. Um, we're about four years in to the development of this piece, each year being able to take some subtle learnings, being able to improve it each year. You know, I ride three-layer throughout most of the winter due to the fact that it gives you the most flexibility because you're layering, right? You're not wearing like an insulated jacket and then when you get hot, you sweat. 
this way, you know, it's all about being layered. And so, you know, essentially thin, you know, it's got some great pocket components for stuffing crap. It's got some big pockets, pockets that work as vents, things you can put large mass in. Um, it's super lightweight. It's got great hood functionality um, with multiple different tightening scenarios. You put it over a helmet. Um, it's just all around a great freaking jacket, frankly. Um, for the base, I normally wear bibs, just because once you kind of roll in, once you roll bibs, it's hard to go back if you're in fresh snow, deep snow components, because it sucks getting snow down your crack. Um, you know, it's been a bunch of years trying to get wrist closures dialed and come up with Velcro that doesn't ice up. Um, I think that's a, definitely a favorite component of mine. I think it looks real nice, frankly. Um, so for bibs, we've gone away from the classic strap with plastic because those things are always annoying. Dig into your shoulders, you know, adjust them. Um, so this is a little bit more of a full kit. Uh, I also, you know, there's like a full hydration program. These things come with these little like six ounce flasks, if you want to call them, soft flasks that roll up. Um, and again, it's a great three layer kit. Looks great, feels great. Um, it's well vented. It also has a very nice wind stopper component, which kind of balances out, you know, being out in rugged, hard wind conditions. And also like if you fart, like it aerates out pretty well. It's not like trapped in there. So for packs, um, I use a, several different backpacks. Um, you know, if I'm out in conditions where there's even the slightest possibility of instability or avalanche, um, I will ride an airbag. Um, I personally like the Arva system. It's one I've been using for years, um, the best pack. Uh, depending on use, if you need more volume, I'll roll to like a larger airbag um, backpack with just more leaderage. Um, like if you're split boarding and you need more space because you're out for a full day, like human assisted, um, or resort and say mechanized access, heli or snowmobile, I'll wear a vest, something that's really thin, minimal amount of volume. Um, this particular ba backpack is kind of my everyday like resort and backcountry activities where I don't think there's any chance of avalanche conditions existing. Um, you know, this is a pack that I've designed over the years with Quick, it's my pack. And a couple key features that I like is, you know, it's all about fast access to your shovel. And so um, this little pull tab, you just yank the thing and then straight into your shovel probe and shovel handle. Uh, you know, pretty, pretty simple. I think oftentimes keep it simple stupid is the way to design. Um, goggle pocket and then a main compartment that, you know, hydration and snacks. I've currently got shovel and probe in this, but they fit in this speed pocket as well. Um, you know, I think for common things that I'll bring into the backcountry, um, for sure hydration, you know, I usually have a lot of water. I'll have like a water bag and then like a Yeti insulated bottle so that water doesn't freeze if you're out all day. Um, a few other things is obviously there's several great um, satellite messengers. <clears throat> um, sometimes I roll with a sat phone. Uh, otherwise, I'll use, you know, there's a couple different, you know, like spot um, devices. Because if you're out of comms and something were to ever happen and you have to actually go try to get service on your cell phone or find someone, um, like the time that that takes, uh, if it's a critical situation, usually it's too long. Um, a couple other great things um, that I'll keep in is you know, a lighter, uh, ways to create fire is always helpful, multi-purpose. 
a um, little bit, little roll of duct tape, a couple zip, couple zip ties, um, and sometimes a splint when we're going on full missions, like a little, you know, you can get these really small kind of compression splints. Lots of snacks. Uh, that's pretty much the pack. That's how, that's how I roll. I really appreciate you taking the time to check this gear talk. Uh, gear is incredibly important because if you're not comfortable out there, you're probably not having a good time. Um, you know, please do follow along. Uh, obviously, the Natural Selection Tour running through beginning of April, essentially. Um, I'm super excited for where the tour is headed this year and appreciate you yeah, being interested. And uh, thank you to Backcountry, one of our most um, solid supporters and where you can find some badass merch. You want the merch? Backcountry.com. <laughs>